A veteran suffering from PTSD finds comfort in a parrot. She didn't pass any judgment. Welcome to the Macaw Aviary. This sanctuary has rescued over 300 parrots. An English Cocker Spaniel is an alert dog for a young boy with type 1 diabetes. He feels safe when he's with Riley. In Bradenton, Florida, lives a unique parrot named Bella. Bella is a young blue and gold macaw that sort of has adopted me. People don't realize how affectionate birds are. She just hunkers down on me, loves me to just ruffle her feathers, and she just goes to sleep right on my chest. You think, oh, she's just a bird, but to my dad, she's not just a bird. She is kind of a part of the family, and she really imprinted on him. She like that's her feeding response when a mother would feed. From my kids' perspective, they think I love Bella more than them. We always say Bella's the third daughter in the whole family. Hey, Bella likes me sometimes if my dad isn't there, but she doesn't like me like at all. <laughs> well, I call her the persnickety parrot. She is very particular, and if she doesn't want to be held, she'll let you know. If she wants to be held, she'll let you know. There you go. Oh, good job. Bella isn't an ordinary parrot. She has a disability, which caught Greg's attention right away. She has what's called splay leg, where the legs are out, and they don't quite know why that happens. Maybe the mother laid on her too long. You can see her feet are bent inward, and it would be like us walking on our ankles. She needs me. She can't eat with her feet. She can't walk. She can't do a lot of things. But she doesn't know that, and that's the greatest thing about her. She does not realize that she has a disability. <laughs> She'll crash land because she can't land with her feet. I have to catch her. Greg adopted Bella only one year before he was deployed to Afghanistan in the U.S. Navy in 2011. When he returned home the following year, he was a different man. When I came back from Afghanistan, I had the deepest depression. Although my life was wonderful, I did not want to be alive. I was paranoid. I was hypervigilant. I couldn't go to restaurants. I couldn't go where there were crowds. On top of the mental stress he was experiencing, Greg was physically injured while overseas and wasn't able to continue the active lifestyle he loved. I used to run for hours. He used to run so many marathons, and it was a really great passion of his that he had. Unfortunately, the physical injuries made Greg's situation even worse, and he completely closed himself off from everyone, including his family. We definitely felt uneasy, I would say, when we were with him. There was a period of time where I just couldn't be there for them. I, mentally, I, w I wasn't there. So it's sad for us to see that, because you obviously don't want to see your dad go, you know, through that. I told my wife, and she said, please call someone, and I did. Greg was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. As he was struggling to come up for air, Bella was the boost that brought him back to life. She didn't pass any judgment. She just saw that dad was home and, you know, she just wanted to be with me nonstop. And I needed that. My dad and Bella, it's a really special relationship. I've never seen a person and like a bird like connect so much. Greg and Bella had a special bond from the first moment they met. So when I first saw Bella, she was down on the ground in her cage. She couldn't get up, and I immediately went to her, and she took to me, and that was all. And that bond is what got him through the toughest time of his life. When I returned home, I tried my best to sleep. I took medicine to sleep, but there were many nights I would just get up and walk and go open up one of the aviaries, and I would just kind of doze off there, and then I would get up early morning and come back into the house before anybody knew. It was important to Greg that he give back to this species that helped bring him back to life. And he found a sanctuary that was looking for volunteers. I found online that Debbie Huckabee had Birds of Paradise and she had hundreds of birds and needed volunteers. So I started volunteering. He spent a lot of time just playing and talking. <laughs> When I was first introduced to all of these parrots, they were very antisocial. 
So the more I worked to get them back into a social situation, I found myself being more relaxed to get into a social situation. So we both benefited from it. I saw Greg with a lot more energy, a lot more drive. He would run around the sanctuary like a madman trying to get things done just because I think he wanted to give back to the parrots that had given so much to him. Greg is now taking his love for parrots to a whole new level and is using his experience to help others in need. I decided that the only way I was gonna get through all of this was to focus on helping others. And I was fortunate enough to find a job working with veterans. So I thought, what better way for my combat vets to heal than to do their community service out at the sanctuary so they could heal at the same time. And that's what we did. Uh, this is a great group of volunteers and they're actually making toys. The veterans can come and cut the wood, string the toys, and actually give it to their favorite bird. So it provides a little bit of therapy as well. The biggest impact that parrots have with people with PTSD is the calming effect that they have on them. Without a doubt, the parrots have made a change in my life. It's nice to come out and even though it's loud and squawky, you're just by yourself with the birds. Uh, you know, and then Greg's been absolutely amazing. You know, he's, he's like a father figure to me. Oh my goodness, my heart just swells. I mean, you have a bird that needs something, you have a veteran that needs something. Eventually that bond happens, and all of a sudden the veteran isn't experiencing the same distractions they once were. Even on a bad day, you can come out here and have a good day, you know? We just saw that the parrots have so much capacity to heal that we started bringing them out into the community. With his newfound confidence, Greg and Debbie take the parrots out to meet the public. This is still a difficult feat for Greg, to be so vulnerable in the public eye. But with his birds by his side or on his shoulder, he has a sense of security that he never had before. Hi, hon. Hi, guy. <laughs> when I go out with the parrots, people don't see me. They don't know what's going on with me. They only see these beautiful parrots. The parrots became a security blanket. For whatever that feeling was that I have, some of it I can't explain, uh, I was able to do things when I had them with me that I otherwise wouldn't have even bothered or cared to do. Greg is ready to push himself to the next hurdle and complete something that he's been wanting to do since he returned home. I've just been cleared medically after five years to start running again, and it's been a long journey, so I'm really looking forward to even a small race running something. Greg is running a 5K marathon for soldier suicide prevention. To me, it's a milestone because it's taken me five years to heal and work through the physical therapy to get to the point where I could run again. And of course, there will be a parrot cheering him on from the sidelines. I would not have been able to do this without the parrots. They've been my whole journey for the five years and today's the culmination of all the hard work. This is my first time running any more than a mile in five years. I'm concerned how I'm going to react with the crowd and I'm concerned what's gonna to happen to me physically. In Bradenton, Florida, Greg, who suffers from PTSD, is running a 5K marathon for the first time in seven years, while Debbie, with his daughters and a special bird, wait at the finish line. I don't see him yet. Racing was a milestone for Greg. It was very important to him that he could actually do that, and I think it was equally important that the birds were waiting for him when he finished. There she is! There she is! Good job! Good job! Every race I visualize, and this visualization was about <laughs> what I've gone through, what the birds have gone through, and how we kind of blended together and made this long five-year journey through four major surgeries, and she was waiting at the finish line for me. Parrots have definitely helped Greg on his road to recovery. He spends more time with the parrots probably than he does any other, any people or animal. And I think they bring out the best in him. I do indeed think that the parrots saved my dad's life. I don't think he would be where he is today if it wasn't for them. The parrots saved my life, plain and simple. If I did not have that connection with the parrots, I would not have found my way through medicine and through therapy. Mythology shows the phoenix rising from the ashes to come back up. So maybe that's what the parrots represented for me, to come back from the ashes. Welcome to the Birds of Paradise Sanctuary in Bradenton, Florida. 
Birds of Paradise Sanctuary and Rescue is a rehabilitation facility and also a permanent home to parrots that are displaced through no fault of their own. Sometimes their parents get old and they go into nursing facilities, they pass away, their children don't want to take on the responsibility. Considering parrots can live up to 60 years or more, it truly is a lifelong commitment. Welcome to the Macaw Aviaries. We currently have over 300 parrots in residence. Hi guys! These are all rescue birds from a horrible abuse situation. And we brought them in and nourished them back to health and these are wild birds, they're not to be around people, so this will be their home for the rest of their lives. Birds of Paradise is offering an avian therapy program that works with children, young adults, veterans with PTSD as a form of healing through working with the parrots. Great job, great job. The avian therapy program encompasses a lot of elements. Getting to know the facility, talking to the parrots, and actually reducing their anxiety level. It's a struggle to, to go from military to civilian. So you get out there with all those birds and then you find one that works with you the best. So he's like your best friend, or like a battle buddy. And you know, in the army we had battle buddies, so. I'm Laurel Healy and I'm a licensed clinical social worker. When I saw the newspaper article last year about Greg and the Birds of Paradise, parrots, I immediately knew that I wanted to volunteer and help the parrots and the veterans. An animal can feel like a safe connection where they can have the experience of companionship, but without the fear. Sometimes you want company, but you don't want to be around an adult or a human. So you get a bird and he squawks at you and says, hello. He's just your friend, you know, he's your best friend. It takes time to develop like the trust factor, you know, and as you get more comfortable, the bird gets more comfortable. Parrots are great therapy animals because they're so intuitive. They can pick up on your bad mood and change it in an instant. I can be in the worst mood imaginable and I can go out there and the parrots will start singing to me or whistling or wanting kisses and, and it just makes you feel wonderful. One of the unique qualities that parrots have is that they are vocal, like we are. So they're able to learn our language, which can create an amazing depth in a relationship. A young boy with type 1 diabetes gained a world of independence when he met his diabetic alert dog named Riley. This is Riley, a four-year-old English Cocker Spaniel. Riley, he is a very uh, fun and loyal dog. He's very caring. This sweet and lovable dog has a job he takes very seriously. He is a diabetic alert dog for his handler, Noah. I feel honored to have him with me. He is always there for me whenever I need him. Noah has type 1 diabetes, which means his pancreas does not produce insulin. Good boy, Riley. The stocks are in awe of what Riley can do for him. It is incredible that we trust our son's life with a dog, but we absolutely do. Noah was diagnosed with diabetes when he was only 21 months old. He woke up one morning, he was almost in a coma, and he was having a seizure, and he had thrown up in his bed. Terrified, we rushed him to the hospital where he was diagnosed quite quickly. He is also considered a brittle diabetic, which means he experiences frequent and extreme swings in blood glucose levels, often without warning. At five o'clock, you can have a perfect number, everything is fine, uh, and within a very short period of time, you can drop into a low, and there are no signs. Uh, a lot of the time, diabetics you know, get a feeling that they're going low or have a feeling that they're going high, and, and Noah just doesn't have that. Growing up as a brittle diabetic meant he needed to be under constant supervision, with his blood sugars checked every hour. For an active child who loves sports, this was very difficult. I have gone to every birthday party that he's gone to. He has never been to a sleepover. The longest running joke is what university am I going to go to with Noah because it, it terrifies me. It absolutely terrifies me. When Noah was five, the family took a trip to Washington. At a museum, Noah was experiencing lows and a service dog came up and alerted him by nudging his arm. It was the first time that Noah's family had ever heard of a diabetic alert dog. When they got home, Leanne immediately began looking into it. We did find a place in 
the states and the cost was upwards of $16,000. And that's, that's not something we could afford or, or even most families. Then the family discovered an organization called Sweet Charity. Sweet Charity Medical Assistance Dogs trains dogs for children with diabetes. Riley is very driven, but he's also very calm and confident, which is a very rare set of qualities in one dog. Come on. Up. Sit. Sweet Charity was training their first diabetic alert puppy and looking for a handler who would be a good match. Riley and Noah just, just clicked. The bond was undeniable. It was, it was quite incredible. Sort of like love at first sight, I'll say. What is so impressive about Riley's ability to help Noah is that he recognizes and alerts 15 to 20 minutes ahead of a glucometer. It's just pretty amazing. Good boy. Thanks for taking care of Noah. Riley has been a life changer for Noah. We had Riley only for just a few a few months before Noah had his first seizure in a while, and it was unexpected. He had just had lunch and Riley alerted it. Riley really helped prop him up because he was passing out. And at first I didn't realize what Riley was doing because he had not been trained for a seizure. And he was there for Noah and us in a way that we had never imagined could happen. Riley, come here. He feels safe when he's with Riley and it's not just with his diabetes. You know, he's always at Noah's feet when he's doing his homework, if he's watching TV. He's, if he goes to the washroom, he, Riley's he, right he there. He is there. He is always, always there. And Noah, he holds that dearer than anything else. Riley is his best friend. Since Noah's blood sugar lows and highs are very sporadic, Riley can alert Noah either five times a week or five times a day. When Noah's blood sugar is very high, Riley will get stressed and jump around to make sure Noah knows. When Noah is very low, Riley will nudge his hand to alert him. Good boy, Dad. Good boy. After Riley alerts me, we have what we call a puppy party, where we give Riley a treat that we can't have any other time. Good boy. Good boy, Riley. Thank you. Yes, good boy. Riley sleeps with Noah and checks him throughout the night. If he senses something, he will jump on top of Noah and nudge under his chin to wake him up. I'd been checking him for seven years. So that first night, of course, I went in. Riley was confused why I was there, and it was as if he was looking at me just to say that Noah was fine and I can go back to bed. It gave me this bizarre sense of not being needed and relief because I was so used to waking up in the night and the fact that I don't have to now, it, it goes beyond words. Noah's biggest passion is sports. While he plays basketball and soccer with his friends, Riley and his parents are always on the sidelines keeping a close watch. I want him to have a bit of freedom, but I'm usually always there close by if he needs me. Next year, Noah will be starting high school and he wants to start doing more on his own. But allowing Noah more independence is difficult for Leanne and Jay. Letting go for me is a work in progress. It's really, really, really hard. Even though I want him to be a normal 13-year-old, I want him to have his independence and go to high school, but it's, it's hard because the alternative is unimaginable. Today, Leanne and Jay have agreed to let Noah take a golf lesson with one of his friends. Aside from school, this is the first time they've let him do an activity on his own. Knowing Riley will be there to alert Noah if his blood sugars drop is what's keeping everybody at ease. It's scary to leave your child that is at risk for a seizure, possible coma. It's gonna be hard to leave him and, and let him go. Riley is a diabetic alert dog for his handler, Noah. Noah's parents have always been around to keep a close eye on him, but today they have agreed to let him go golfing with just Riley and a friend. Okay, so you've got everything. You've got your diabetes bag, you've got your glucometer. Yeah, got it. I'm feeling a little nervous because I've never done anything like this, but I am excited. Come on up, good boy. That, that's my spot. <laughs> good boy. Everybody in? Yep. All right.
very difficult for us to let him go on his own, but it is time and it's important for him to do this. And the only reason we feel comfortable allowing him to go is knowing that Riley will be with him. Come on, Riley, let's go. Here, Riley, sit. Good boy. The lesson went really well today. It felt like a relief to have Riley there with me rather than my parents. He gives me a certain amount of confidence and I'm hoping that in the future I could do more of this with Riley. Come on Riley, let's go. Did you have a good time? Yay. What was it? Good, good job. So, did Riley need to alert or anything? How did no. it go? No, everything was good. It's fantastic. Well, I'm really proud of you guys. We're really pleased with the way the day turned out. We're thrilled that Noah gained some more independence today, and Riley was on the job and did fantastic. He didn't have to alert, but uh, that's a good thing. So, our day was really good. I think the best gift that Riley has given Noah is that he isn't so different than all the other kids his age, that he can go out and do all the same things that they do. He'll just have a sidekick beside him. There's just so much they can do together that they don't need mom and dad nearby all the time, and, and that's a great thing as he gets older. I think I've changed dramatically with having Riley, with my self-confidence and how I look at diabetes. We're a team, and we'll be able to do this on our own.